Hello there, and welcome back to part two, where I'm discussing the wave function in a bit of detail. So where did we leave off? In the previous video, we were discussing where we could use the eigenstates of Hermitian quantum operators as a basis to describe arbitrary abstract quantum states. And we know that abstract quantum states, they live in what's known as Hilbert space, as opposed to, let's say, Euclidean space where the vectors i, j, and k live. So let's take, for example, the eigenstates associated with the energy operator. These are the energy eigenstates. And they're, it's Hermitian operators. We can take linear combinations of those to describe an arbitrary abstract quantum state living in energy Hilbert space, which I'm going to call ket f sub e. So here is how we take the linear combination of those. We know that these coefficients, these c sub n's, are actually the probability amplitudes and they can be expressed using this inner product notation. And I'm hinting at where the wave function is coming from, but I'll talk more about that in a moment. It's very important to note that these eigenstates, these kets, these are actually discrete quantities. So we can use the same or do the same procedure with the momentum eigenstates and the position eigenstates. So this f sub phi or ket f sub phi, f, excuse me, ket f sub phi is an arbitrary abstract quantum state living in momentum Hilbert space and it is described by linear combination of the momentum eigenstates. And the same thing can be said for position. Now, as I'm sure you know, energy is a discrete quantity in quantum mechanics. It's quantized. However, experimentally it's been found that position is continuous. We can have any value of position. So I'm going to apply that to our arbitrary abstract quantum state living in position Hilbert space. So we saw a moment ago that that's given by this, these expressions here. Now, if you want to be fastidious, I have expanded out the sum here, if that's something that you're interested in. Now I'm going to take a bit of a sleight of hand or do a bit of a sleight of hand. We know that we're summing over n, which is an integer. It's equal to one. So, and we also, I'm sure you can visualize that we're really talking with the area under a curve and that the, the delta n is actually one and we a lot of the time don't write it because it's simply one. And that's why I haven't written the delta n here or here. The thing is though, if we actually explicitly incorporate the delta n, it will illuminate something very useful to us. So the delta n is the increment in n in the sum. Like I said, think a Riemann sum. So let's go to the bottom, bottom of your screen. We have our arbitrary abstract quantum state living in position Hilbert space. It's described by a linear combination of what we're calling discrete position eigenstates. The thing is though, as I said a moment ago, position is actually continuous, not quantized. And that means that we can shrink down the increment in n to be infinitesimally small. And that's exactly what happens when we do a Riemann sum. So delta n is going to become dx and our sum is going to become an integral. And of course, these are still the c sub n's, but they're now going to be a continuous probability amplitude. Now, if you understand that, you understand what a wave function is. 